Okay, let's start. Um, thank you very much to join us today. Um, we're going to go through power surfacing and uh, I will uh, tell you the summary of the, of the next hour for us and then we're going to start to to play around with power surfacing. So first of all, here the direction about myself. So I'm Ken. Uh, I have like a strong experience of, of SOLIDWORKS since 15 years now. I'm working in SOLIDWORKS. Uh, I like strong skills in uh, surface modeling. Uh, I was uh, part of the design company in France that built boats and uh, like some car seats and the complex shape that I used to do in, uh, in SOLIDWORKS. So I was able to see the difference between the surface modeling in SOLIDWORKS and power surfacing tools. So we're going to go through some example. That way, we're going to see the interest for you to use uh, power surfacing. So I will be uh, helped today with uh, Stéphane Noisel, which is one of our colleagues here at Solid Experience. And um, Stéphane has uh, 20 years of experience in the engineering domain. And uh, he has like three years of experience on power surfacing as well. So he will be here to, to help us through the question that we will keep for the end of the, of the webinar. So I'm going to talk about some different aspects of the, of the software. Here's the, the summary. So first of all, we're going we're gonna to see like in general what is power surfacing, how does it work, how is it integrated to the software, and uh, like in general the, the interface of it. It's pretty easy to, to understand. And then in the second time we'll go through like the the principle of the software, like how the system works itself. It's really easy. In fact, I'm gonna talk about that for like a couple of minutes. Then the best part for you is about to see uh, how you can take advantage of the feature that uh, power surfacing is bringing to Cyrox. So we're gonna see like some different case studies. Uh, we're gonna see um, the, the first of all the basic volume about like an optical mouse that I will, uh, I will manage and design in front of you on, on, on my screen. So it's about like the basic uh, feature, like drag and drop points, basically. Then the basic surface, which come with the power surfacing tool as well. We're gonna design a spoon, which is uh, important because the spoon is a complex shape in uh, all the, the way that it represents. Like you have like all surfaces connected together with a lot of curves. And you'll see how power spacing can like deal with that really easily. Uh, the C, uh, the chapter C is about like a hybrid technique that I told um, because here it, uh, the case that we can target a shape that we've been doing on Cedarworks with like the regular feature that we have in Cedarworks, and I want to connect them with the power spacing. That way we can reach like another level of detail that we can't have with just Cedarworks surface model. So we're going to see all those uh, the, those uh, case studies together, and I will uh, try to explain to you as well uh, as much as I can. That way, if you have like, some question, uh, we're going to have to answer then at, at the end. The fourth chapter, uh, I will call it chapter, even if it's just a takeaway, I will just give you like a conclusion. So uh, just like the, the few things that you need to to remember about parish facing, and then just a question and answer. Uh, like a phase with Stefan that will help me uh, to, to answer you. Uh, and the, whole, the, the whole webinar will last an hour and it will be large enough to discuss about power surfacing. So let's go into the topic uh, right away. I prepared a like couple of, uh, I'm gonna get off my webcam just here. Um, I prepared a couple of, uh, of files here, so that way we'll be able to go through all the, the aspects of power spacing. I will open my Cedric, which is already here. Let me create a new document here. So, power spacing is a built-in solution. It's an uh, add-in that we install for Cedric. 100% of the, the plugin is, um, is from the software itself. So it's here. So once you're in the software, you have to like, create here to go to the, the add-in manager and you'll have power surfacing, which is here. Okay, so after you install it, it'll, it will be here. So because it's a, it's a add-in, you need then to activate the add-in from SolidWorks here. There is a different power surfacing. This one is the reverse engineering, but we are not talking about it today. But our power surfacing for today is here. Once you have opened it, 
it's 100% of the software which is located here and at the same time here on the top of the tools panel you have like all the related tools so here in that tab it's 100% of the software here so few tools as you can see a couple of them not that much most of the time you will use a couple of tools and in loop in fact it's not a like, complicated process uh, parts facing what is important here is that the, the parse facing tool works by itself. It means that it's a feature in Cellular. So each time that we will create a feature from parse facing that we call the power feature, we'll have that kind of hierarchy here. So I will create that one here quickly just to see what happens. So here I have now that feature, which is called a power feature, and it's here. So a power feature is the result of that parse facing add-in. The result here is to create a feature that I can edit anytime I want. We're going to see in the example that I, uh, I made that the, even if it's a feature, we can always apply the other SolidWorks feature after that one. So it's really, uh, let's say, fluid the way of working with uh, with purge facing. So what happened now in terms of manipulation for the software? Once you're ready to, um, to to create your shape here, you have like multiple choice here. The, the principle is a subdivision software, so it means that you have to drag and drop entities in order to create your shape. So what I have right now, it's like it's called a box, even if it's a sphere, because it's based on a box of uh, edges here. So you can select vertex here, edges or faces. Regarding the way of previewing the the, the box, you have different uh, different results. So here, I'm watching up the boundary surfaces, then the surface itself, and uh, the hybrid version, which allows me. Uh, to, to select a face and the edge or vertices here. So whatever you do, you will do it in that screen, in that feature only. Power surfacing is 100% built in the software, and 100% of the manipulation will be through the, the, the power feature itself. That's it. No other tools. It means that when I press OK, it's done for the tool. I'm ready to work with all the regular features that I have. Like For example, I want to make a hole in that sphere here. I will be able to do it really quickly. Just like a simple feature in SolidWorks, and I will be able to do it in both directions. And here, like even if I want to apply fillet on that, it's possible. Everything is like pretty cool in that process here. So what I have now, I have like this kind of a sphere which came from the power feature, and then a few other things. So is that the main principle of the software here? Then about the managing the, the shape itself, you have a lot of different possibilities, like each uh, of these faces is like possibilities. Like for example, an extrusion, so I can extrude a face. So I will be able to create another edges. When I have edges, and edges can create intersection in like tri-dimensional stuff. So it means that even here, if I want to add a loop, that what we call a loop is another uh, round of, uh, of lines. So I can create a loop here. And again, it adds like a couple of, uh, of lines here. Each time I have a line, I will create a new face and two vertices, for example, if they're crossing a line in two. So it means that now I have like a lot of manipulators that I can move around. So for example, here I will go back to a normal selection. I can take that line and pull it. The same here. The, the dot, I can pull it, like the vertex, I can move it around here. So anytime I can move anything, in any direction. That's the, the whole thing with parse facing. It's really easy. In fact, it's like pulling and pushing some macho. It's really like um, uh, easy to understand. Uh, one of the, the strengths of the software is about the, um, uh, the skill that you need in order to do something. Like compared to the surface module in SolidWorks, it's really hard. Like you need a lot of time to get used to surface modeling in SolidWorks. Instead of spending a lot of years, because we are talking of, of, of years, like in uh, to, in order to do something complex with surfaces here, we are only talking about days. Like after one day or two days, we will be able to do that. So I didn't talk about like the the, the software itself. So software, the parse facing software is made by NPower Software. It's an American-based company, and they're really reactive. You can like ask the support anytime, and they will answer to you within two days, which is great. And one of the big advantages of that software is the community, like the online community that you have. There is like a lot, a lot of people that are using parts surfacing. 
first phrasing is a tool that has been for in, in Celeroot for years, like even like 10 years, more than that even. So we know that software, people know it, and you can have at any time you can ask for help from the community that you can find online. Like, um, like YouTube video, like Google search, you will find a lot of information regarding parse phrasing. That's really cool. Um, so that's it. It's NPower software, and you will install simply, and you'll get what I just showed you. Okay, so that's the main principle of the software. Something really cool, really accessible, and uh, you don't need any particular skill. The only skill you'll know you, you need it's about like knitting surface together, or at least knowing the difference between surfaces and bodies. It will be the first knowledge that you need to to know in order to to make it works. Once you're ready to create an object, then you have like the possibility to edit the feature each time. And the good thing is, even if it's a special feature that I have right now because I installed our surfacing on my computers, it doesn't mean that I can't open that file on another computer that doesn't have our surfacing. That here, that that feature, power feature here, uh, will be open in another like machine as just like a regular feature that we can't edit because if you don't have the license it just be like just a feature here that will be read by the software but not editable so this is the only thing but it means that if only one of you have the software in a team it's not a, a problem because the other will be able to open the file so that's one of the, the interests of using that uh let's go to some um example here so we're gonna close that one i don't need it anymore and we're going to review the, the order of uh, processing. So first of all, I want to show you just a product that I made out of porridge facing. Here. The goal of that example is to show you that we can mix two ways of uh, building. I started that file, first of all, by building my power feature here. Then I added a couple of like regular feature, if I can tell that. Like it's uh, just regular extrusion, some sketches, even like a split, I was able to split that uh, that power feature in two pieces. That way I was able to add details on my mouse. So in, at the end, I will have that thing here. I will have like a shell from my power feature. And as you can notice, it's really like well-made. That, that, that surface is beautiful. You can see the continuity is perfect. It's like a class A, class a modeler, so it's perfect. At the same time here, the bottom of my mouse, I mix my power surface with the regular extrusion. So even after a shell, everything is good. Like you can even tell there in the in the, in the currents, it's beautiful. So that's the goal of power features. Sometimes you need to create like strong and complex shape, but you can mix that shape to regular feature. It's really important because the interest of having that that power surface tool here is to be able to work with it layer as a mold engineering or whatever you want to do. It's a part of SolidWorks. So it means that all the power of the tool, you will retrieve it for later. So that's fantastic. Here, just to, to see how the, the, the power feature was made, so I can just roll back until the beginning. So it was my first step here. And as you can see, the power feature gave a, a volume, like a volumic body here. So if I edit that one, edit feature here, I just edited the feature as I will, will do it with a regular feature, and I will have my mouse here. So whatever I do, I will have the result in my cellular later. So each time that I will edit the power feature, it will just come back as a feature later. So as you can see here, I have like colors and uh, like blue dots and like some information in here. So the first uh, thing that we can tell is about the orange line that I have here, because sometimes you need to work in a mirror uh, setup so it's the purpose of that orange line here i chose to be like i chose to work on a mirror so that orange line here follow the mirror of my part so it means that if i move one point here the other is moving so this is one of the biggest interests uh here you have the colors and lines too because it's not only about moving points you can even like uh, apply the weight on the uh, edges that way you can crease a line or smooth it for example, here, you can, if you look at like closely that line here, there's a little uh, bump on it. Maybe you show it there here. You see, it's like the, the curvature is like sharper here. So 
to do that, I just change the weight of the line. So here's the, the weight of my vertex or edge, because it works with vertex as, uh, as well. So manipulation are infinite. You can do pretty much whatever you want. It's pretty simple. It's just like drag and drop and point. So it's not a big deal, but the result will be always clean and beautiful and really stable at the same time, because the modification that I, uh, I made in the power feature will be like convert into a, a nice uh, power body at the end. So perfectly uh, seam, seamless connected. I just pressed OK in order to rebuild my uh, my feature. It will take some time because it's like uh, made with a lot of different verses and lines. And when it will done, I'm going to show you something about the the performance of the tool. So here's my feature is back to normal. I can roll down to the end and I have everything here in my in my uh, in my file. So as I can see, I'm back to normal. And just to talk about the performance here in my accelerate, you can show the the evolution of performance re regarding my my file here. So what I have here and it's really cool because here is the the shell for the whole document here. The shell is the one of the like the the biggest feature in my file, 45% of the total amount of time to rebuild the file. But if you scroll down, you'll see here that little power feature, it's barely like counting in that process. So that's another interest here. So I'm gonna close that one and uh, go further with another example. So we're talking now about a spoon, which is like maybe funny for you, but spoon is really challenging actually observatory you have like a lot of surfaces connected together so i'm going to show you how i, I will build simply uh, a spoon with power surfacing the goal is to start from scratch just for you to to see the process here i will go online to just like show you that just finding an uh, like, like a random spoon uh, online to have like the the contour of the the objects that way it would help me to move the, the dots around the shape. So it will be like following a certain rule of uh, designing. So to earn some time, I already downloaded the picture here. So I will choose simply my top plane because I want to see that spoon from the top here. And as a maniac of sketches, I will create my line. I always do that first. Scale my document. So I want a spoon about 130 millimeters long here. And now I'm ready to create a Is uh, here. I want that one here. It's loading the feature, and now I will use the scale manager. I think it's 130. Once it's done, I'm able now to move the spoon on top of the actual 90 degree rotation. Now I can put it here. I don't need to be so accurate. Like Okay, so here's my uh, my picture. So now I can exit that sketch with my power surfacing tool. Here I don't want to work with the volume. I want to work with the surface only, and then I will be able to add a uh, thickness on that layer. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you. Here I will create my planar surface instead of a box because you have like multiple way of creating a power surface. Uh, can be from a box, a torus, cylinder, a planar surface, the one that I will use, a cone. You can draw a sketch and it will like follow the contour. Create from surface, which is really handy sometimes, and create by drawing on a plane. So it, this is all the way that you can create a volume with power surfacing. Here today, right now, it's, it's going to be the create plane surface. So what I have right now, I have like that thing here. What I will do simply is adding some connection between lines. So sorry, I need to do something first that I forgot. I'm sorry. Here, the picture, I want it to be faded a little bit. I want the full pictures to be a little fade yet. And now I will be back to editing my power feature. So what happened here? I have my picture on the, on the bottom here, and I have my actual power surface tool ready to work. So I'm gonna manipulate those. So, for example, here I want to create a mirror. That way, I'll not, I will, I don't need to like move each side of the spoon. So, 
In order to do that, I need to place a line here. So I will select all the parallel lines here and ask with the right click to create a loop. By creating a loop, it will be always in the middle. I can change that for something else. I can move that line somewhere, but I want it in the middle, so it will be zero percent. So it's right in the middle. That way now I'm able to select a plane and select a plane that is going through that line as a middle. I want it to be the mirror. So I select the plane and then mirror. That way now it shows me the result here. The blue area here will be the mirror of my uh now I have that orange line that I was talking before. This is the mirror setting. That way now, the first step will be to manage the lengths of the objects and be sure that on the left it's good and now I can move it on the right as well with like a scaling process here. That's not bad. On the side too, here, I can like really move that into the center here and then I'm ready now to give some shape to that. So let's say that I want a basic selection and I want to click on that area here. I want to put it here, then extend it because it's working with like a lot of uh, drag and dropping. It means that I have to drop, drop my pen on top of my shape, pretty much it's what happened. If you want more accuracy while, while you are like moving a point, you can always um, show one of the other viewing mode. Like let's say that I want to see the mesh, the actual mesh. I can click on the middle one here and I see like the, the dots on the edges, which is more accurate than having like a boundary instead. So I will work with that. So that way I know like really accurately where is my uh, my edge. So here, for example, there, that's good. I can like make them a bit further. Again, here seems good at the beginning. I want to take that and put it here, like more narrow at the beginning. And I will move that around to be sure I fit to my, uh, to my view. Even there, like I don't need to, to like to follow exactly the, the riddle here, but anyway, here I want to move that. So as you can see, it's really simple. Once you're happy with it, you can always move points in another direction. Now I want the spoon to be deeper here, obviously. Here, so whatever I want, and then on the side, I can always move that on the side, and that way now. I'm shaping my spoon exactly as I want it. So and here, if I want to, like, a, like here, I have a little bump, so I put it here. So you see, like, it's so easy actually. When I will press OK button now, I'm ready. I'll have my spoon. So I can even, like, hide the first sketch. Now you see, I have like, a perfect shape here of, uh, of surface. Like, it's like having that kind of surface, like so clean, it's a challenge with the surface tool in Solaris. You know that if you if you are like if you have some experience in surface, you'll know that it's so quick and so good that surface that definitely worth it to work with power surfacing if you have like solid, strong surface to build. So that was a sample. At the end now, the result just to show you what happened. I had like already the, the spoon finished. Another one that I did a couple of uh, days ago. And here is my finished spoon. So what happened at the end of my power feature here that I had, I was able to apply a, a thickness on it. That way I was able to add some details. Like let's say I needed a surface and then that surface, I apply a contour somewhere here to cut my surface. I was able then to remove material with thickness and then apply a fillet around the spoon. So I had my finished product with a too many problems with it. So really quick, really efficient, high class surface, really good. So uh, next um, next sample, uh, door handle. That's really cool because you'll see how you can constrain a parse face to something more accurate than actual uh, drag and dropping. It will be more about like targeting an actual shape. So what happened here in my file, I have that which is a swept that I cut off the, the face here, that I was able to, um, to get some information about my door handle. Because it's a door handle, I wanted like a specific gap between the door and the, 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 the axe of my, uh, of my door handle. And then I wanted a specific diameter here. 
but diameter is 24 millimeters. So that that swept here is 24 millimeters width. It's exactly what I wanted. Then I created a power feature. The other one is connected. It's like magnets to the to the surface here. So it allows me to work on that tip of my handle without having to uh, bother to like continuity or stuff because the software will manage that itself. So to show you the feature here, I will edit that one here. And now, as you can see, this is like just a web of lines and vertices. So here, because I imported that reference into my file, I was able to connect the contour of my power feature to that. So really cool. Like the continuity is total, the tangency is perfect. So it's a full curvature recontinuity. So now that I have that, I just added a couple of loops around and I was creating some vertices and some lines. So now, just to show you, I can like really quickly change the shape of my uh, of my handle. Let's say that a more twisted here. That one I want it to be lower. Switch that to here, and even that face here, I can like. So even. So if I press OK now, it will rebuild the, the shape right away, really quick. And then just a neat process to get a full body, like a volume body, which is perfectly sealed. So I can work with that like a regular feature in SolidWorks. Again, imagine like how hard it could be to, to create that with SolidWorks surface. Like the continuity is so good right now, and even the, the tip of the handle is perfect. So this is where power facing is really strong. So talking about like uh, importing references into a document, I want to show you my last example. Here I want to open, first I will open uh, an, uh, a part that I built with surfaces in SolidWorks. And again, I was telling you like uh, I like a strong experience with uh, surface modeling in SolidWorks. I've been like building boats hull, which are really complicated, but here, even if I know uh, surface modeling in, uh, in Telerox, I wasn't able to create that as quickly as I wanted, okay? So I have like that field surface here, which is a nightmare, like a lot of bumps and stuff. Even if all the, the whole part was pretty much uh, well made, I mean, I had only like three different cylinders from different sizes, and then like nightmares begin. Like I spend like, a lot of time, maybe 20 minutes to figure how come I can link those three faces together. It's really hard, okay? You know that if you had like some experience in SolidWorks, you know that it's a nightmare to connect those three things together. That's why I wanted to show you that example because with sparse facing, it's way more simple. I will show you and I will actually do it myself. That way you will see it. So this is the final result. This is the, the, the product itself. So as you can see here, the quantity is beautiful. Uh, like, it's really hard to tell where the, the merge is. You see, like nowhere, pretty much. I am able to do it, and then, like even at the bottom, it's perfect. So, remember, with the surface modeling, I was like barely uh, capable of finishing the, the surface. But now, instead of even like being able to finish it, I was able to to knit the surfaces together and even apply a, a thickness on them. So it means that even if the power feature is something really, really like tricky and complex, I was still able to create like another feature on it, like a thickness. So now that product is perfectly finished. So how come is it so uh, so easy? I will show you my feature here. So I will edit that feature, and here is the result of my uh, power feature tool. Actually, it's only like it's, I started from a box. Like they call that a box in power spacing if it's if it's a sphere, and then I like extruded each part of the sphere to have that result here. So it's something like really easy to reach. And what you can see here, look like the the kind of uh, yellow lines they have around means that there is a reference that I imported. So that's why my uh, power spacing was able to magnet to those circles here. So at the same time, it target the shape, the size, and the tangency. So those three things are coming together each time that I will like connect them together. Obviously, it's not about tangency all the time. You can manage that setting. You can have like contact um, and, uh, and instead of tangency, so you can manage that with some control on it. But the purpose here is to do that. So I want to show you my way to doing it. So I just rebuild the feature, and now, again, knit together, and 
thickness, and that's it. Okay, so now I want to show you how I built that. So this is my file at the beginning. So it was like only like three tubes, okay, with different shapes. And I will create now a box in the middle of that file here. That box, whatever the size is, I will like manage that later with my drag and drop uh, process. So it will be enough for me. What I can do instead if is trying to get like the, the shape as much as I can. So here I will and now move here. I want to target as much as I can the thickness of the whole uh, the whole project here. Now I will move. I don't need to work in in, a, in mirror here because it's uh, something. And I will extrude. I want to extrude that face here. And I want to extrude that one here and the other one there. Once it's done, I want to get rid of those faces because I want a surface, not a volume. So those three faces here around, I will delete them. Now it's a surface body, not a volume body anymore. And this is the next step is to arrange the, the lines to be sure that they fit to, the, to the, the closest environment because it's based on the closest environment. So it means that you have to approach as much as you can the line. The software will trigger the, the magnet here. That's here. here, that thing too. I will get those two lines with a scale manager. I get them. Okay, from the top view now, to be sure that they're really like fitting together. Here I can move at the same time those two lines here. So it's just a matter of selecting and moving dots together. Here, here. Okay, once, like now I'm ready to create the, 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 the magnet. I will import the reference. I will do it only for one, uh, one of them here. So I will import the magnet now. I'm ready to select all those faces here. And now I will go in tool. I have all the, the tool in here. And I will go in constraint to face. So I ask all the edges around to be magneted to the, to the tool here. So now the fit is perfect. Tangency, size. So if I press OK now, what I have here, it's so obviously it's not connected there. But what I have here is something that will follow whatever happened in my. Uh, to show you here, I will delete that. I will add. Now, what happens if I change the size of the, the element? So let's say that, that here, change it for 60. And here is better. I have like the, the, perfect, the perfect shape. It has follow the, the rule of changing. And it's even working with the instant ready tool. So if I click somewhere here, though well maybe I will go back instant ready. If I click there, I, I I'm able to move that and it will rebuild right away. So it's really like it's really live as a process. It's really cool. So it's pretty much it. I, I rebuild now, I have everything working like as well. So it's exactly what I wanted. So now I don't need to save that one. And I think we are good. Yes, we are good. I think I did it. So just for a, like, like a takeaway, a little confusion. So what you have to, to, to remember for forest facing. So first of all, the, the tool is fully uh, built in SOLIDWORKS. You don't need anything else. Once you bought um, forest facing, you just have to install the license and the software will work by itself in the, 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 the SOLIDWORKS software. Then I was telling you, it's not because your colleagues doesn't have the, the, the plugin that they can't open the part you were building with. It's just like they will not have access to the edit mode on, on that feature, but it's still something that you can manage. And then 100% of the tool is, uh, is in the, 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 the parts manager here. So you don't have to care about the feature that you have. Like it's only one here, it's part feature. So it's the this is the the, the only matters 
everything is here when you are activating the the the, the, the feature manager you are in 100 percent in the tool so you are able to use everything you have here pretty much whatever you have so then when you will create the, the feature at the end you have like something really strong and really flexible so this is power feature here and you can manage whatever you want later add features you can like need uh, like you remove faces, whatever you want. It's perfectly stable. That's the main goal of uh, working with Forage for surface because you'll have like a, a strong and complex shape, but uh, stable, better than uh, having the the surface tool here. So it's pretty much what I have to say with um, with that tool. Uh, I think we uh, took everything. Yeah, yeah, I think it's good. Uh, Stefan, did you have some question while I was uh, experimenting my files? No, so far we don't have any question. Uh, just, uh, just want to say to everyone, sorry the 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 sound was a bit choppy there, but uh, I think uh, <laughs> for the most part it was okay. Uh, so uh, we're on Q and A Q &A session. So if you have any questions, uh, we're uh, we're always uh, we're always there to answer them. So. Um, uh, I think there's only three pre, uh, three, three people attending the the webinar. So, uh, any questions from uh, from the crowd uh, right now? Doesn't seem. Yes, Robert, uh, you have a question. Uh, do you want to um, do, you, do you want it in writing, or we can unlock your microphone? I think we're gonna unlock your microphone. Uh, go ahead, Robert, with your question. Okay, if I have it in my uh, software. How do I install it? Like, how do I go open that up? Okay, uh, that's a good question. Can uh, Can you show, uh, let's say, the demo part, uh, the demo yeah. for a portion of it? And sure. uh, of course, it's a standalone license, so uh, you would need to call your uh, solid uh, solid experts rep to have. Uh, 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 pricing uh, and everything, but uh, um, the the demo is actually fully unlocked. So that's uh, that's a cool part of uh, of uh, power surfacing. So let's go, uh, Ken, if you can yep. show. So what well, you were explaining that I was on the website and just to give you a sample, Robert. Here you have like all the products that in power software are doing, and so we have a lot of them. But the one that uh, and once you're in that page here, you'll have the demo download. So just to give you a sample, you will like enter your information okay. there and request mm -hmm. a demo. So you'll receive an email with the, a downloadable link, and it will just like uh, it's basically an installing uh, wizard, and you just have to install that software on your computer, and by itself, SolidWorks will start up, and you have to just activate the the component, and that's it. Um, okay. That demo version is available for 14, uh, 14 days at least. I'm not sure if it's not even 30 days, but whatever. You have like the full power of the, the software like right away. So it's just a file that you will install. It's really simple. In fact, you don't need to do anything else. Okay. Uh, can you show back, uh, Ken, uh, where to uh, manage the add-ins? Uh, maybe just a uh, less yeah. expensive. Sure, on sure. That. My pleasure here. So the add-ins are located here in SolidWorks. You have here mm -hmm. add-ins, and you'll have here all the, the list of add-ins that you can activate depending of your licenses. And here you'll have power surfacing. So the first start of, this, uh, of SolidWorks after you install the power surface will be off, obviously. So it's up to you to activate it in order to make it work. So mm -hmm. we have two choices. Like you can like activate it right now and for the next startup. So it's what I did here. So each time my SolidWorks will start with parts facing on. Okay. Just a quick uh, clarification. I think on the first install, it's going to enable the add-in by default. So you probably won't have to go and mess around in your add-ins unless uh, unless uh, it did happen for, for me uh, back in the days that uh, I had to manually uh, open it. Uh, but usually it's by default. Uh, as soon as you install it, it's going to become uh, a new add-in that you can uh, that, that you can use right away. If it's not starting, then go into the add-in and just uh, give him a little kick, and it's gonna it's gonna open. Uh, we do have another question here from uh, Abdul. Um, uh, can you remember me? Can uh, what is the the price bracket of uh, 
of uh, power surface. It's not that expensive, but uh, I will, I will uh, have like the, the information in US dollar. So it's between a thousand five hundred dollar and uh, two hundred five thousand dollar US. Okay. okay, perfect. So uh, I think it's uh, as you can see the the power of this. Uh, between learning surfaces and the time you can uh, you can achieve um, a very good organic shape uh, inside of power surface uh, i think it, it pays by itself uh, well in my case using it for two years uh, it uh, i paid it uh, many many times uh, compared to uh, using surfaces uh, i'm very efficient with surfaces but uh, when i learned about this software oh my god that was uh, that was a bit of a game changer regarding this so uh, i hope uh, it's going to help you guys uh, yeah, and it's really it's quick to learn. learn. Yeah, it, it, no, it's very easy to. Uh, it's just push and pull like uh, uh, modeling, so it's uh, it's very easy. Um, good. Uh, anyone else has a question? Uh, I think you can maybe uh, in the meanwhile show. Um, uh, we usually have this question regarding power surfaces. Uh, how do you input the um, uh, dimensions? Okay. Yeah. Can you? Just re-explain uh, because people think they're they're going to push and pull, but uh, if they want to achieve uh, precision, um, uh, well, of course, with any spline, you're you're not always always as uh, precise. But uh, if you can show it, that would be uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure. Like I have a sample here that I will show you. I was like I prepared that file in, in any case, and I'm glad you asked for it. So here, power is facing here in my folder. So I prepared that file. So I was doing that. That, that sample a long time ago just to practice myself so the goal of that is to show how you can like retrieve actual like accurate information based on dimension so here the thing is to build up a, like kind of a shell from a remote controller here so this is the bottom part and if you know like um, our uh, training uh, course of surfacing you will recognize that, uh, that object here anyway here the principle is to create here i will create now just a surface but that's a regular surface i built with solid roofs okay so that surface is based on actual construction that I have here so it's based on dimension so 25 meters wide for the half of the part then i have like 120 for the length and this is only a, um, a dimension for the spline here because it's a, it's a spline uh, it's a style spline so it's driven by that line here so the two important information are here that one here and that one here so once it's done here, I was able to mirror that surface to have it on the opposite side. And that was my guide for my power facing tool because I was able to uh, magnet my, uh, my power picture to those two edges here. So it's what exactly I did here, I will show you. So as you can see here, this is my power picture stick to the, to, the, to the surface here. So what happened here, if I edit the power picture, I have that. So I'll have a ghost of my first surface here. So at the same time, my surface is providing the dimension and the continuity because I wanted something with, which was perpendicular to the, to, the, to the plane here. So that surface provide those information to the power surface at the same time. So the direction of tangency and obviously the dimension of the volume. So one, like once you did that, you were able now to work with that thing here. So it's just a matter of like how you create your uh, your uh, construction. So this is one of like one of the possibilities you have to retrieve dimensions. And I I have like another one that I can show you, which is um, let's say like uh, less automatic in terms of process, but it's more about like tracing lines. So again, if I want to 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 um, to design a spoon as I was doing earlier, I will create like some lines that will help me through that process so first of all on my front plane i will draw a line that will fix the length of my spoon and i'm gonna like even with spline here or like a real spline always like create a shape here with roughly the the the, the, the goal here is more to give like information about the, the dimension i want to respect here so that one Come on here, just like roughly here, and I can have like damage in it. So any anything I want. So I want 20 millimeters here. Maybe it's too big. 15 will be good. Yeah. And 
I can move my points to have like the shape. So that way I can give some information for me, even like adding construction lines. So that way I will be able to actually like set dimension somewhere. Like I want that that point here to be a certain distance, whatever I have. So I can like build up a kind of uh, scaffolding that will hold my uh, my drawing layer. Even on the side view, if I want to show that, I will go here. I will create a spline which will show the, um, the side view of my spoon. I want something here. I'm going back there. Here. Yeah, this is my uh, my shape. So now I have all the information I want for my uh, in order to create my power surface. So here, power surface. No, so not. Oh, so that's that wasn't a good one. I wanted um, here. So now I'm able now to, to to drag and drop my points along my sketches. Actually, I'll, it's only like drag and drop on top of the lines. There is not linked to it, but you can always link dots to planes. So if you know that you have a certain way to like to create your, your your volume with planes, you can actually like target the plane. So here I want to increase the number of lines that way here, the other way too, as I was doing earlier. So I want the fr uh, front plane to be the mirror. Okay, and now I can follow my uh, my uh, my drawing. So here I will be here. Then I want to take that line and whatever I want to do now, I can just follow. See, like, it's really simple, actually. Here, I will go to the, like, the mesh mode. So it will be more accurate for me to put my line. Here. Oops, it's here, so I need to move that one here, just like, a, yeah, now you see, so I can move them and I uh, will be on top of my uh, my shape. So because I didn't move all the point together, it's uh, it's a bit harder, but you'll see that uh, it's creating the, the shape like slowly. Oh, that's why I have like uh, here, why yeah, it will be better that way. Here and here. So as you can see, I can like simply follow the, the shape here. This is the way to, uh, to create something precise. It's it's pretty accurate that way because you have like to follow the, the line and so at the end you will have like a nice result. So it's how you can do it. And you have to mix the, the two mix the two information, having surfaces that you can magnet to retrieve information based on tendency and dimension, and at the same time, like having a kind of a ghost that will help you to follow the actual shape that you need to create. Okay, Ken, sorry, but uh, I think we we cannot hear you anymore. Uh, the, the the microphone uh, was not working. So uh, thank you for the example. That's actually uh, what I wanted to see. And this is the most uh, common question is, uh, can you at least have some sort of control regarding dimensions inside of uh, power surface? And yes, you can. Uh, Robert, your end is still up. I'm going to open up your mic uh, just to make sure if you have another question for us. So um, uh, there you go. It's coming up. Uh, no, I cannot seem to open. Unmute. Uh, no, the, end is, uh, the end is, uh, is away now. Okay, I just, uh, you're unmuted, uh, Robert, if you have any questions. Oh. Uh, just to find the uh, demo, I have to just search. Uh, our surface and I'll find the site. Uh, Ken, can you uh, maybe paste in uh, in the chat uh, the exact link to um, uh, Empower and uh, yeah, this one actually. Yeah, I just did it. You should have received it. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Okay, okay so no problem. So there was. A, it's always nice to see. I'm, I'm, I love the the, the speedness of uh, Power Surface, and uh, I do believe uh, it's been around for so long. And uh, like I said, uh, 
when you don't know about it and you go uh, you go and do a surfacing, uh, it can get pretty uh, complex and hectic oh, inside yeah. of it. And it's very heavy on the system uh, rebuild wise. Uh, I think we showed earlier that the, uh, uh, the rebuild time of this is uh, is very very efficient. So um, uh, I remember having uh, some sort of uh, 15 second to 20 seconds of rebuild time on a model, and uh, you use the yellow bar, the freeze bar, to uh, to help you a bit. But uh, when it comes to power surface, uh, he, see, he sees this as a not a dumb body, but uh, like like if it was an imported body and you just create features over it so it, it's very very uh quick and uh, yeah. inefficient uh, regarding uh, rebuild time Definitely. so that's good everyone so if you don't have any questions uh we will uh, we will cascade to the lobby room again and uh of course uh this webinar is going to be available uh, to our website uh, so you can watch it again and uh, thank you very much for attending this uh, solid experience uh, webinar. Thank you, Ken, for this presentation. It was very, very good. And uh, we will uh, close our camera and uh, push everyone to the lobby if you don't uh, have any questions. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for uh, any that, as uh, Stefan said. And uh, see you around, I hope, one day. <laughs> Bye. Oh, Abdul, you do have a question before we leave? Do you want uh, to un... Ah, you just said uh, thank you, bye. So that's perfect. Okay. Thank you very much for attending, Abdul. Okay. So, uh, okay, I'll cut the camera and uh, it's going to push back uh, to... Uh, if you want to stop presenting, it's going to push back everyone to the lobby. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye. Thank you, bye.